coach Corey Close, and the student athletes are Lauren Betts and London Jones. We'll open it up with the opening comments from the coach. Um, we, uh, you know, I want to first thank our three seniors um, that were here today, and including Emily Bassoir, who's not with us as the fourth, but, um, you know, Izzy Anstey and Cam Brown and, and Charisma Osborne. I just want to thank them for their impact on our program, uh, both on and off the court. Uh, Charisma and Cam came back for this year. Um, and I think the thing that stings me as a head coach right now is that um, this isn't what the way, the way they wanted to go out. And uh, ultimately, I, I take responsibility for that. I'm the head coach. Uh, we had 67-64 lead with a minute 46, and we gave up um, layups and free throws, and we missed layups and free throws down the stretch. And ultimately, I'm responsible. Um, reality is, is that I just don't want the last, the last few minutes of the game to define the impact of those three seniors. Uh, credit to LSU, they got the shots that they wanted down the stretch, and uh, we didn't get the shots that we wanted. We did not execute the way that we needed to, and um, and you know that's that's one that's going to sting for a really long time for me. Um, really thankful for our staff and for our team for what they fought through this year and uh, what, they, uh, what they earned, and uh, we'll, we'll be back. We'll take questions now for the student athletes. Gavin Carlson, Daily Bruin. Uh, for Lauren, uh, Angel just said that in the first half she was kind of feeling you out, seeing how the officials were going to call the game, and then felt like she was able to pick up the intensity guarding you. How did you feel about the overall defensive game plan against you and how that might have affected your way to be aggressive tonight? Um, yeah, uh, I mean, they were playing super aggressive from the very beginning. Um, obviously, like, it was just a, I mean, it was just tough inside. Like, I don't know what else to say. Um, <laughs> I mean, I think in the first half, she did a, you know, a pretty good job guarding me, um, but, you know, I, I think at the end of the day, like, you know, it's up to us to, you know, create inside touches and everything. Um, I don't think that, you know, it was necessarily what they were doing. I think it was just us, and I thought that we could have done a better job. So. <clears throat> oh. Hi, uh, Grace Whitaker, Daily Bruin for London. I know your shots weren't dropping early, but then you got those two key threes in the third that really kind of spurred you guys. Um, can you talk about your sort of perseverance in this game to continue shooting and what the commentary on the team was like to keep you shooting? Yeah, I think confidence is a big thing and being a shooter, not only just a shooter, but just staying confident in that, whether shots are falling, not falling. I have a good support system who encourages me, continues to tell me to take the shots that I practice on a consistent base. So I just think having that mentality and staying present and focused on that. What, what do you guys make of LSU? Obviously, you know Angel from, or you both know Angel, right, from Team USA stuff. But what do you, what do you make of sort of that, that program and where it's, where it's been the last year, where it's going? What was it like to go up against? I mean, yeah, they're, they're a really talented team. Um, you know, all the best to them. Uh, I think, you know, we just, at the end of the day, obviously, like, you know, I'm on UCLA and I'm going to say I think we are the better team and I thought that we just didn't show up today. So, you know, but they're a great team. Um, London and Lauren, can, can you just talk about what the game plan was, was going in and was just, you know, hitting two of your first 20 three-pointers? Did that, how did that change what you were able to do, especially when they started just collapsing down on Lauren? I mean, I think we had a very, very prepared game plan. Our coaches do a great job of preparing us before the game, um, and it's just on us to go out and execute. And like Lauren's been saying, we could have done better. Um, no excuses, but we know what to do moving forward. Um, I think, but I do think the preparation was there. You know, of course, they're going to double or send whoever they can to Lauren, and we have a great guard, so just being prepared on the outside. Um, <clears throat> Azar Johnson from NB Sports. Um, even though Coach Close has speaked about um, Brown and, uh, and Osborne um, being at this since the last year, I always believe that when a player, especially you know, being players, everything that you pour into 
getting here to this point. Nobody sees that, the blood, sweat, and tears that you guys can contribute to it. So if you two could just talk about those players and, and what they mean to you, um, especially with them not here to, to speak for themselves. Okay, Lauren, could you start on that? <laughs> um, yeah, Bain, sorry. Yeah, um, okay. yeah, the seniors mean a lot to me. Um, I think this year has been a struggle um, for me specifically, and I can't thank the seniors enough for what they've done for me. Um, they've really gotten me through a lot this year, and um, specifically Izzy. She's literally like my sister, and I'm so thankful for her and her leadership and um, her guidance, and they're all three just amazing people, and I know they're going to do really big things, and I'm just so proud of them, and I really wanted this game for them. Um, you know, they worked so hard, and they really deserved it today, so I'm just disappointed. Yeah, um, Lauren really honestly said everything, but just their leadership and I think who they are off the court. Um, like she said, you you definitely ha you have a sister in them, and so it, as much as it hurts them, it hurts you, and seeing one of us hurt, it hurts us all. So we're really disappointed, um, and we wanted this for them, like she said, but looking forward to amazing things as they're going to do because of the people that they are, um, and so. Right here, and then last one is here. Go ahead. Uh, ben Balch, Los Angeles Times. For both the players, Coach mentioned, uh, you know, the last couple of minutes, Gabriella gets to bounce on that jumper. You're up three. It's looking like great shape. What What do you think kind of happened from that point forward? Um, I know there were missed shots on your end and made shots on their end, but anything beyond that? Um, yeah, I mean, after, we just needed to get stops, period. Our defense was just not good enough today, and, you know, it, it really, you know, it didn't matter really what we did on offense. We just needed to get stops. And I think that we just fell asleep at certain times. And the minute you fall asleep, they take advantage of that. So, um, yeah, we just needed to keep playing hard through the entire game. Last one, go ahead. Lauren Wayne, The Daily Bruin. For the players, um, did the halftime locker room sort of conversation mirror the one um, versus Creighton on Monday? And which players sort of took the lead in galvanizing your group? Um, we have leadership, so it's not always one, it's multiple people um, interpreting what they see and what we need to fix, but I think just coming in, staying present, what we talked about was obviously the things that we needed to work on, and it didn't always go our way, but we tried to find a way, um, and it didn't turn out as the result that we wanted. But Thank you, student-athletes, for your time this week. Thank you, too. Sorry, I had to wait. Questions for Coach? Front row here first. Marvin Chambers, 4.0 Sports Media. Coach, coming to the East Coast is always difficult for you, especially in this round. You, you know, you're always losing a close one. Next year, you know, civil, civil lining, you guys are very young. So what do you tell your, your, your team going forward? Well, it's really hard because I'm not sure that we can – internalize the teachable moments right now, you know. Um, but, you know, there's no excuses. We, we had this under our control. We could have not been in Albany. We, we lost some games and that we shouldn't have lost. And, you know, there's three games specifically that we know we let get away, that not a, taking anything away from those other teams, but we had opportunities to close them. We didn't. And, and that's why we're on the East Coast. And so we have nobody to blame but ourselves from that. Um, yes, we have really a great young team, but you know we talk all the time about in these games that defense and rebounding, I thought we rebounded pretty well, um, but we allowed 30 points in the fourth quarter. It's gonna be tough, you know, and so, and, and they weren't, they weren't like they were just making tough shots, they were getting to exactly their spots and they were getting layups. And especially down the stretch, when we made our big run in the third quarter, um, yes, we had 21 points and we didn't turn it over like we were turning it over in the first half, but we they only allowed 14. And when you're in these games, you've got to rely on your defense to get those stops. And so, you know, and then we were trying to play with foul trouble a little bit too and go a little bit of offense defense. And, you know, I will play this over and over in my head and try to figure out from my perspective how I could have led them better or different. Um, you know, but you're not 
going to win games in this level, giving up 30 points in the fourth quarter. And so, and again, I'm the head coach. I'm responsible. And so they're young. I need to lead them better. And I need to lead them into situations where they have the confidence and that we execute in those scenarios. Youth cannot be our excuse. We're here. And Andrea Adelson with here. ESPN. Corey, there was a moment between you and Angel at the end of the game, and she said that you had told her good game, and one of your coaches was talking crazy. I'm not sure what she was referring to because she wouldn't go into detail, but I didn't know if you could shed any light on what that yeah. was about. Well, that's just not who we are. I, I don't want to say anything about Angel. I only speak to what the Bruins are, and the Bruins are uh, classy. Uh, t speaking life into each other, and we are not going to give that any – we would never do that, and especially it would never come from one of my coaches. So we will – you know, I, 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 maybe she heard something mistakenly, but I can tell you, and, and I, I'm not saying anything about Angel. I'm just saying from what comes from my camp, absolutely not. Right here. Here. Uh, Scott Rabelais with the Baton Rouge Advocate. Coach, two questions if I may. One, how did you feel the game was officiated, especially inside the both, both teams' post players really piled up a lot of fouls? And two, did Flaugier Johnson exceed what you expected she might do? I mean, it was uh, her best game ever in the NCAA tournament. Uh, she's a great player. I, you know, I was I watched her when she tried out for USA Basketball this uh, summer. I've seen her. You know, I obviously saw her journey last year. Um, she made some really big plays and some big moments. And um, you know, I thought a really critical one was the out of bounds play. Actually, she got on the second cutter there, and she made some good plays in transit. She's a really good player off the bounce, especially. And so I thought one of the keys was she hit those two threes early behind the screen, and we really wanted to go under things and keep her in front of us and it forced us to make that adjustment and go over the top of those screens um, so then down the stretch it allows her to get a step downhill and it makes you choose between getting her downhill and then they went to a pick and roll on the open side and we didn't rotate all the way across so I think really what allowed her to get going is her hitting those big threes early uh, so it allowed it, it forced us to make a change on that what was your first question again oh the officiating uh, I had no comment so <clears throat> go right here um, Isabel Rodriguez with the next. Um, obviously, this is the last game that you guys will play in the Pac-12 mm. um, or representing that league. I just Could you reflect on what that means to you? I know the game might not have gone the way you guys wanted, but just what the league has meant to you over the years and yeah. going forward. Uh, it's been a really um, special group of people to be a part of uh, growing this. I, when we... When I first came back to the Pac-12, we were really like the, the fifth of the Power Five conferences from a women's basketball perspective. And we got together one May before the May meetings and the, all the coaches and said, hey, what do we need to do together to go from last to first? And we've done it. And we made a strategic plan about how we're going to be a part of it. And we executed it um, selflessly. We took off our institutional hats and said, hey, we're going to grow our game and we're going to grow Pac-12 basketball and we accomplished it and I uh, I will be forever grateful to those other institutions those other coaches the other players who were a part of building that up and I will be also forever grateful to the uh, Pac-12 people behind the scenes that really worked very very hard uh, to build that up and so uh, you know it's it's a mixed bag we're really excited about joining the Big Ten and what's next for UCLA um, and we're also humbled and grateful for the journey that we've been able to have in the Pac-12. Uh, it's coming. Uh, coach, uh, oh, I'll hear you. Okay. Uh, Sorry. You know, this weekend a lot and, and not gotten yeah. past it. How, how hard is that from you? What do you think about that kind of that narrative of not being able to get the breakthrough you want and, you know, what's it going to take? Yeah, well, I think, you know, it's hard in the moment right now, Ben, to be honest with you about What's it going to take? Um, you know, we've obviously been to a lot of Sweet 16s and won Elite Eight, and uh, we want more. And uh, and so, that's my job is this off season to figure out how we can uh, earn more. And what does that look like from my leadership? What does it look like from the growth within the players? Uh, what does it look like in our player development and team development for these high pressured moments? And uh, you know, I, I think that. Um, you know, that's, that's going to be, that has to be our next step. And we have to be able to, um, no excuses. 
Um, we got to find ways to adjust, um, to pivot, to overcome, to conquer, and uh, a relentless pursuit of the excellence that we are that we're going for. Go, Hi, Coach. Um, MV Sports is our Johnson MV Sports. Um, I just wanted to ask real quick. Do you feel like, because yesterday Oregon State, another Pac-12 team, to be honest with you, I think when they came in, everybody that's coming in this bracket thinks it's just going to be automatically LSU and Iowa and North Carolina and South Carolina. I mean, South Carolina and, and, and Notre Dame. Um, I think clearly Oregon State has something to say about that. And you, put the, you, almost, you almost put the fear in it by changing but what you guys did today. Um, do you guys feel like you, you get the respect? I know you talked about the Pac-12 and how you moved the conference, but coming into this bracket, I know you can only speak for your, your team. Do you yeah. guys feel like you, you got the respect that you deserve coming into this bracket? Well, it's hard a little bit because in, on the one hand, I always say, look, we take care of the things under our control. We are in a different position, you know, and so that's the tough part that I, we have to take responsibility for that. There's just nobody else other than ourselves. And at the same time, we had more, we were in the toughest conference in the country. We were tied for second in that conference. We had more top 25 wins than anybody else. And we got sent to the toughest bracket. And, you know, I think everybody would say this is the toughest bracket. And that being said, bottom line, down the stretch, Oregon State executed in the half court and got stops. Period. Bottom line, today, we didn't execute in the half court down the stretch and we didn't get stops. So you can go back and forth, but that was under our control. And so, you, uh, yes, you know, there's always going to be arguments and different things, and it's very hard with some of the principles when you have that many good teams from one conference. The principles in the S-curve require some different things, which are difficult. And so, you know, I, I will always, um, you know, want us to try to uh, focus on the things that are under our control. I will always ask that um, the NCA and the committee try to reward the whole body of work. And I will always um, hope that the officiating grows at the same trajectory as our game. That's what I will always come back to is that we're all growing together. Right here, then last one there. Go ahead. Gavin Carlson, Daily Bruin. Hi, Coach. Um, I know you talked a little bit about the seniors and what they meant to this program, but just specifically Charisma Osborne. We all know her decision to pass on the draft last year and come back, and I know she felt like this team could have achieved big things. If you could just reflect on kind of what her overall impact meant to this program and just, you know, the fact that it, unfortunately it, it fell short today. Yeah. Uh like those, you know, it's really difficult because we're not a sorority, right? We are uh, a basketball program that has very high aspirations and very high goals. Um, and so there's this, it's in this moment, it's really difficult because honestly, I just feel like I let those three down because, and not just charisma, it's all three of them um, because I wanted it for them so badly. But we always talk about the only the two things that stay with you for the rest of your life from these four years is who you become and who you impact. And who uh, Charisma Osborne and Cam Brown and Izzy Anstey have become and how they have impacted not only our program but the community and represented UCLA with such class and dignity. Um, it is remarkable. And uh, I don't you know, right now, the outcome just really, really stings. But long term, I'm so proud of who they've become, who they've impacted, and the kind of players. And, and Charisma's just starting her career, basketball career. She's going to have a long career in the WNBA and overseas, and she's going to do great things. Um, but I always want that to pale in comparison uh, to the young woman she's become and the leader she's become, as well as those other seniors. Wrap up here. Hey, Corey, Miriam Swanson, Orange County Register. Um, congrats on getting this far again. And um, but it's, it's, you talked about sort of growing and like how the fans have come and embraced your team this, this past year, especially, and how the game is growing. Um, how do you take all that into account? And then personally for you, like what, what what's the next week, few weeks look like for you? Well, I do think, you know, I really am appreciative of the way that Southern California basketball has embraced um, both us and USC and just 
uh, the, the future is really, really bright um, for our programs and the battles we're going to have and, uh, you know, the fan, the attendance records we've set, the uh, eyeballs on our sport, the TV ratings, everything. Um, and thank you to the people that, like yourself and others that are covering our sport, and it means a lot. Um, you know, we want to be a part of this incredible momentum that women's basketball has garnered. And, um, you know, we want to make Southern California really proud. And we want to get more eyeballs from the East Coast, even on our sport there in Southern California. And so really grateful um, that uh, for the way people are showing up for women's basketball, I think it's a really big deal. And, uh, and I hope it's, this is just the beginning. Coach, thank you for your yeah. time this week. Thank you thank guys you, as media. well. Appreciate it. We'll see you later on. Thank you. So